Good evening, Gad Roberts. How are you doing? Good evening, Denise. I'm fine from rainy London. How are you? Oh, listen, we're, you're, we're the same. We have <laughs> torrential rain for the last two days and it's so oh, dark. It's, you know, as if we didn't have enough to deal with this year. Well, it was at least then we can, you know, we'd be happy to stay indoors. This is true. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, well, thank you so much. It's really exciting and I love the new work that you're showing us this week. It's brilliant. Thanks for having um, me. Not at all. It's but I can first of all let's ask about your name. Were you christened Gaj? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So um so when I when I became an artist, I bought a website domain with my real name, uh, which is Gary, Gary Roberts. Um, made loads of business cards, and only after I'd spent all that money did I do a search for Gary Roberts artist, and it turned out to be a pornographic cartoonist no. in America. <laughs> So, so whenever you search for my name followed by art, you'd uh, you know everyone's some... going to do that now. After. Yeah, oh yeah, totally. <laughs> no, stay with us, stay with us. Um, yeah. um, because, I was always, because I was always kind of creating things. Uh, uh, people used to think of me as an inventor when I was a kid. I, I think I yeah. wanted to be an inventor when I was a child right. as well. Though. And um, so they started calling me Inspector Gadget. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then that just got shortened and then just everyone calls me Gadge now, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So you always, you always kind of were creative. So you knew you were going to be an artist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was always, I was always creating something, whether it was uh, drawing, uh, painting, sculpture, um, I, uh, poetry as well. You know, I, I seem to remember writing a lot when I was a kid, and I think I even designed a computer game once. So I was just kind wow. of like shooting all these ideas out I didn't, yeah, I didn't quite know where I was gonna go but yeah I was always sort of um uh yeah ferreting away at, at something was your your so, mom was um was she a fashion designer no she uh, she was just a, a, a machinist yeah she okay. she um, made clothes in a factory but um then she would uh, obviously for Halloween and for costume parties, she'd make us clothes, uh, costumes to wear. And she just came up with the most incredible things. And, um, you know, she she was definitely a, a, a sort of creative uh, force in my life, you know, when I was in my earlier years. You know, I'd be, I'd be upstairs in my room painting and then suddenly I'd hear like her voice booming through the house. And I thought I'd done something wrong. I'd run downstairs. And she'd she'd be like, "Come look at this Jean Paul Gaultier fashion show," or you know, she'd oh. always, or then she she she'd be listening to music and she'd say, "Listen to the lyrics here. Listen to this lyric. Isn't this incredible? You know, what what does that conjure up for you?" And so she's always been really great at sort of, mm. you know, um, helping me sort of promote and uh, evolve creatively. So, and did you study in our college? Um, I studied fashion design actually, but it was um, it was a very it was a very creative course. It wasn't just sewing and sketching outfits. Um, it was yeah, it was a bit of a revelation to me actually. We did a lot of um, research into art and architecture and literature and stuff like that, and just the idea yeah. that you can cross pollinate these different creative uh, sources. So yeah, that was that was like that was like lightning to me the fact that you can you know look at a flower and be inspired to create a building from that flower or you can create a yeah, yeah. From, from some song lyrics or something like that and mm. you know we we did a lot of yeah cross-pollination of, of ideas like that and that that kind of set the foundations for what i do now i guess i can see that yeah it's amazing isn't it yeah um, yeah and all your portraits, are, they are people you know, are, or, or do you make any of them up or do you always have a, a model in front of you? I, I always have a model, yeah. Um, so the way that I do it, um, I um, you, you may have seen in my video that I made, um, mm. I do a lot of sketchbook work. So I've always got a sketchbook at hand, mm. um, noting down little things that I've heard or stories that I've heard. Yeah, your sketchbooks are fascinating. They're Thank really you. quirky. I, I thought you'd like that. <laughs> it's exactly how I imagined it to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a padded cell on page. But <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, I kind of form a, a story. Usually it's it takes a story form, whether it's something that I've heard or something that I've been through in my own life or something going on in the news. Um, and then I trawl the internet for models working in London that might match up with that character. And then yeah. I bring them in, uh, photograph them, do sketches and just take it from there really. So sometimes there are people that I've, um, painted that have been friends, but most of the time I like to I like to take a step back personally and get someone new in. So yeah, and I, we notice on your video as well you have a lot of three like just behind you there the three D model with the the trousers. Oh, yeah, I recognise that. That yeah, I mean, it's fascinating <laughs> that you make sculptures first. Is is that do you do that with all the works? Is um, I. I, I don't necessarily make things all the time, but um, I, I style it almost like a photo shoot, I guess. You know, so I decide what the model's going to wear, um, if they've got something in their hair. Um, I would like to, obviously, the, the the fashion and textile thing comes in. It comes the, in, yeah. The, 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 yeah. Wig, the wigs and stuff. And I think it just adds an extra layer uh, mm. to the work, really. And then, you know, it's not just it's not just me viewing life the way it looks i'm creating a world within that frame so yeah it's amazing yeah so um what is your favorite medium then to work with <laughs> um so yeah so um I, I i work in acrylic on on canvas um i did start out actually uh working with oils but then I was in the Netherlands for four years and I rented a studio there and um, I met an artist called Ed van der Kooi, who's a great portrait artist in the Netherlands. And he taught me a method of um, using acrylics where you, you, you treat it almost like watercolor and you put paint very thin layers <clears throat> on the canvas and mm. build the skin up almost like skin in real life. There's lots of different layers. Wow. It's, it's a it's a very long painstaking process but you know when you you take a good look at the skin and there's so many different colors in there um, mm -hmm. and if you layer up these colors they kind of show through and it's yeah it's like a bunch of acetates on top of each other so yeah mm -hmm. I, that that's the way i do it i mean it's yeah it can be a nightmare sometimes because you know you get to a point where you think oh my god this is never going to get finished but um then one day it boom, just happens they're in the room, yeah, yeah. They're actually staring at you, so it's that's always very satisfying. And um, this is a, like you're not a full time artist painting all the time because you make um, you have other business as well of creating t shirts and logos as well, isn't it? Or yeah, yeah. So, so I do I do very more more simplified illustrations um, mm. and I put them on t shirts and homeware and stuff like that. And I I do that as a um, an online business, so. Which has been a bit of a um, yeah, it's been a bit of a lifeline over lockdown, especially. Yeah, so. I say um, so. And up up until two weeks ago, I was a part time cleaner as well. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I think everyone's reassessing their lives at the moment. So I just thought, yeah. you know what, life. I feel like we're all cleaners at the moment, especially. Yeah. <laughs> all, I have to clean the gallery. It's like every oh, time God. I release. Yeah, how has lockdown affected your work? <laughs> I mean, how have you coped? Have you tried new ideas or? It's it's kind of been all change really. Cause like I said, my process would be to actually get a model in and mm. it just hasn't been possible this year because you know, all throughout the process, we, we, we're not really allowed people to come into our house. Mm. So I've had to kind of turn it on its head a little bit. Um, so I've gone back into my archives and picked out work that, um, you know source material that i've kind of um you know photographed previously and i've had to reapply it in a different way instead of creating this three-dimensional thing um i've had to just kind of turn it on its head so um yeah it's it's been it's been very strange but you know they say necessity is the mother of invention don't they so i think in some ways it's it's kind of elasticated my brain a little bit to, yeah. to, to just to think outside the box. And there's nothing wrong with taking yourself out of your comfort zone. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, I, I've spoken to so many artists and they've all, 
been experimenting, like you said, especially portrait artists, they don't have the models in, 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 but you adjust and you find other ways. I mean, that's the creative gene inside you. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, th I think it's going to be very interesting, the work that mm. comes after this, because yeah. um, we're all thinking in a, in a different way. Mm. And, you know, this is when artists get to work, isn't it? So. so this is, yeah, exactly. And I presume you get asked to do people's portraits and commissions. Yeah, so I do. Um, I, not often, actually. People just, right. people do tend to take the work as it comes. But I, every now and then I do get um, a request for a commission, which is yeah. which I which I absolutely love because it's. Do you, you do, but even now, would you will you be able to work from photographs instead of having a person in your studio? Yeah, I mean, I probably would. I obviously prefer to take the photograph because my work's very yeah. detailed. So um, you know, someone who's just done a little selfie, it's it, it can be very difficult. But I, you know. I'm willing to try anything once, so, <laughs> you know, just bring it. <laughs> Wait, you see, the commissions are going to flood in now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, come on, bring it on. <laughs> we, like, from the gallery side, we've noticed that we're getting a lot more commissions from our customers. Because, really? You know, yeah, they're, they're at home and they're thinking about it, you know, they've, we've spoke about it before, and then now it's like, okay, actually, why not get it done? But yeah. your portraits are so, they're, they're so quirky and different, you know, it's totally different than your traditional uh, portraits. So I think if somebody's looking for kind of a fun, um, yeah, I think you're the oh, person. Oh yeah, there, Ab you? absolutely. And, um, you know, like I said, I spent a lot of time in the Netherlands and mm -hmm. what, the, what the Dutch masters used to do was if they were painting, uh, a carpenter or something like that, then they, they, the model would have like a, a saw or a hammer or a chisel, you know, somewhere. And so it almost, you know, that's what that's why I place various objects in the paintings because it kind of tells the story of the character a bit. Ah, yeah, okay. um, so it, I think it would be quite ideal to, yeah. you know, take commissions like that because you know, I could also tell a little bit of a story about this point in the, the person's life. Yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. So, so, the picture behind me and the one behind it, tell us, what was going to your head <laughs> with these two <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Yeah, so so um, this year it's it's been a bit of a melting pot in terms of my ideas and um, you know, I, I haven't really set out to do any sort of theme, but as always, um, a, a current seems to be running through all the new paintings. Um, I remember a couple of months ago during lockdown, I read a newspaper report about um, how young people are turning to cosmetic enhancements um, because they want to look like the filtered photograph that they put on their social media mm. and you know obviously this is a new thing because I, I grew up in the age of airbrushing so it's definitely not a new <laughs> thing but we're you know we're, we're we're getting to a point where the 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 technology to create these enhancements mm. these unrealistic enhancements it's available to everyone so I I kind of got to thinking about the expectations of uh, what we perceive as beauty in our modern world. And so I decided to do completely the opposite and show show beauty, but with flaws. So, um, you know, here we've got, um, uh, you know, a, a, in the background, we've got the flower, which is a symbol of beauty. Um, but I wanted to make sure I drew all the dog-eared bits and the, the, the black bits and everything like that. Yeah. And the idea of a, the, the the flower being a beautiful thing it is what it is and even when it's dying that's exactly how it's supposed to look there's no there's no enhancements there's no cosmetic surgery um and also i think as a portrait artist it's a very weird time because i'm walking around london and mm. everyone's got half their face covered i know so, yeah that's painting yeah yeah <laughs> so i think that's why i chose to put the <laughs> the flower right in her face and i just think that's, uh, that's you know brilliant. i also oh, like to inject a lot of humor into the work yeah so. uh, I, I think that's so important you know painting should make you smile completely yeah definitely i like to i like people to think and i like people to you know even if they come up with something completely different to the intention behind the painting exactly. i love yeah. that yeah 
And are these two people any, who, are they people you know, or did you grab them online? No, they're just, they're just they're models that I, I found online. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, they're great. Yeah. And what, so I, I presume yeah. you're doing our Christmas show as well this year. Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. I, I presume. <laughs> <laughs> Just said it, say it with a little bit more confidence. <laughs> I am. Yes, they're done. <laughs> yeah, they're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is going to be nice because, you know, it's again, again those the, the, the really beautiful small paintings that all yeah. the artists do. They're kind of, you know, sort of dinky versions of their of what they're working on at exactly. that time. And so it'd be interesting yeah. to take these themes and make the, uh, you know, the, the smaller yeah. versions. Yeah, because um, your colours have gotten really more vibrant over the last um, six months anyway. Yeah, since I met you last was in March in, in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Your work was really vibrant as well. So you seem to be kind of getting a bit more, I don't know, braver and but more, yeah, maybe, Maybe you're more confident about uh, the work as well. Yeah, I, I think I am. I mean, um, it, because I, I, I've basically had three jobs for the past five years. I always, you know, it's always about timing for me. Yeah. And time restrictions. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a combination of that. I mean, especially in the past couple of months, my, my garden has been my space. You know, I've got this. Uh, yeah. I'm so lucky to have this studio which looks out onto my garden and flowers and just you know just taking in the sky especially when you know we've all got to take care of our our mental mental health get them yeah, exactly. so, so i i hope that the yeah I, I just think you know slap a bit of yellow on you know it gives, gives, gives some sunshine so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what what like are you strict artists about painting do you have like paint at the weekends at night during what is what do you prefer um, I I prefer to get up at the crack of dawn um, and paint from six o'clock in the morning till about two o'clock in the afternoon. But okay. I've I've learned to just answer the call really. So whenever you know, whenever I can feel hello on the back of my head, sort of like go on, do something. You know, so it might even be in the middle of the night. I just wake up. <laughs> and I go, oh, all right then. You know, it's almost like letting the dog out. You've just got, to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've just got to get get to the studio and do it. I prefer yeah. not to work in the middle of the night because that reminds me of um, being in university and just, you know, working to, yeah, yeah. Okay. in the morning. So. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, whenever I get the call, I I just do it. So. Oh, well, gosh, it's so nice to talk to you and get a real insight of your work. I love it. I really yeah. do. Oh, it's I great love to see yeah, can't wait to see the Christmas show pieces as well. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank oh, you. Stay safe and well and hopefully see you soon. See you soon, Denise. Take Bye. care.